Infinite personality is coming to our Spawn Vita Temple uh, and uh, you know giving us such a you know good piece of information and uh, you know spiritual advice for all of you. So I request all of you to please hear so nicely, make notes and ask questions, right? But before we get started, we need to introduce you to Guru Ma uh, Maharaj So Maharaj uh, is a very organic personality in the uh, ISKCON uh, world. So if I would like to introduce you, all of you would like to know about Maharaj? Okay, so like we are beginning with. Maharaj was born in United States of America. And Maharaj did his studies in nuclear physics at Purdue University. And then Maharaj got in touch with Hare Krishna movement, which is ISKCON at the University of Texas. And then Maharaj actually changed, I mean, went on his professional uh, you know, uh, work uh, with the military services and he was situated in Panama. And then later on, after completing Maharaj's military services, he actually joined Hare Krishna movement full-time in St. Joe's, Costa Rica. And after that, in 1976 was the time when Maharaj went, uh, came and attended Mayapur Rindam festival and uh, got initiation from His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedan Swami Shri Prabhupada. Shri Prabhupada Ki? Yeah. Yeah. And then in 1982, Maharajji actually got sannyas initiation in Rio de Janeiro, which is in Brazil. Then, Guru Maharaj Swami uh, Maharaj, he earlier contributed in ISKCON Costa Rica, centered in administrative services and distributing BBT publications beginning in 1975 in the United States. And from 1976 to 78, Maharaj was in Central America. And he became the temple president of Costa Rica in 1978. And he began traveling around Latin America, opening newer temples, establishing worship centers and collaborating in diverse administrative services. In 1987, he became a member of GBC and zonal assignments in Tucson area in Arizona and Mexico. And then later on, Maharaj is serving GBC since then. And last year, Maharaj became the chairman of GBC. So this is where, uh, uh, I mean, now today we have got association of Maharaj so, without wasting much of uh, time, let's get uh, immediately over to Maharaj. Om Ajnana Timandasya Dhanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Asma Shri Varvena Maha Vichetani Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Pakadahasham Tadati Sapagantitam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nityanamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pasthyatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Garadha, Shri Vashari Gaurabhaktavinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I'm very happy to be here and have this opportunity to address all of you, the future of the world, well, part of the future of the world, and uh, especially, hopefully, the future leaders of Srila Prabhupada's movement. You know. uh, some of us are getting old, we won't be around for long, and so we hope that you will all step up and take over. So that's what we're addressing today in this little talk about detachment. How to become 
detached from things that seem to be overwhelming. Just like uh, if you here in here in Delhi and so many places around the world, uh, I remember the one time I was in Hong Kong and I saw some villagers. You could tell they were villagers from from the inland China, and they were looking up the buildings with awe you know, because in their village there's no building. And uh, so you can stand before a building just like uh, 1968, Srila Prabhupada sent Brahmananda to the Macmillan building to try to get the first Bhagavad Gita printed. So he said when he came to the building, It was very, you know, opulent and he felt like a small, insignificant person, which is good. That's right, that's what we, we, we all want to think like that, that I'm a small, insignificant. Uh, just like sometimes they put, they put one in a VIP. So I said, yes, I'm a VIP, very insignificant person. You know, so. so uh, so we can see a building and it looks very big, insurmountable. You know? Or you see something very, you know, you have to go a long distance, it seems so difficult. But if you see it from an airplane, it looks very small. So this is, this is what Krishna consciousness does. When we see things through Krishna, then we see it in, in the proper dimension. When we see things from our point of view, uh, then everything seems very difficult. So from our point of view, most of you are studying, I imagine. And so it seems like, oh, so many years, and then I'll graduate and then I'll have to get some work, and then I'll have to do this, and then maybe I'll get married, and maybe I'll have a family, and this and that. Um, it all seems like uh, there's no time for Krishna consciousness. The Bhagavatam says this, you know, that Nidraya Chivabaya Diva charta charta haya rajan kutumba barane nava. It says that uh, in the day, in, in the night time, we're very busy in social activities and sleeping. And in the daytime, I'm busy working, studying, making money. So I would like to be Krishna conscious, but no time. No. When when will I fit this in? So this is our challenge. Our challenge is, when we see from the proper perspective that I am a spirit soul, Srila Prabhupada many, many times he said, if you don't understand, I'm not this body. And this doesn't mean theoretical understanding. It means living your life through that understanding. Prabhupada said, there's no question of spiritual advancement. You can't make spiritual advancement by some academic process. Even in normal academic endeavors, when you finish studying, what, if you go to work for some institution, business, they'll, they will train you in what they want you to do. And you'll find out the university was just a testing ground to make sure you can you know, follow the rhythm, uh, you know, learn things. Generally speaking, it's like that. Then you, they just tell you what they want you to do. And you have some background. But the point is that how, how do we see things? If I understand I'm not this body, then I will 
what am I? Uh, just like some people follow the arduous process of yoga, meditation. You know. And as far as meditation goes, everybody knows how to meditate. You know. Everybody knows that. Even a dog knows how to meditate. You, know. you hold some food, a dog will be meditating. You know. So, but the problem is to, to know what is worthy of meditation. It's like Srila Prabhupada, uh, when he went to Russia the first time, he met with uh, Professor Kotovsky, and he said, after some, you know, professor tried to show how he's very intelligent, and another professor, <clears throat> he spoke to Srila Prabhupada just a little off to the side, it was very funny. He said, Swamiji, I want to understand the esoteric uh, meaning of Radha and Krishna. And Prabhupada said, who are you? And he said, I'm Professor so-and-so. Prabhupada said, no, 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 who are you? And he said, well, I uh, gave all of his upadis, his, all of his designations, I'm this, I'm that. And he said, no, who are you? So the professor thought, maybe he doesn't understand me. So he said to one devotee, tell him I'm... No, 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 he's, he wants to know who you are, the professor. Said, no. So Prabhupada said, I want to know, do you know who you are? Yes, I'm prophet. No, 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 you are not. You are spirit soul. You are not this body. Until you understand this, there's no question of Radha and Krishna. Until you understand it. So until we live our life from that perspective, really understand, I see things in this way, I am a spirit soul and I am servant of Krishna. So if I am servant of Krishna eternally and I am Mr. or Mrs. or Miss or so-and-so, that's a temporary designation. Uh, just like, uh, like somebody announced, I'm the chairman of the GBC. Well, next year I won't be. You know. So that's not the most important thing. It's, some, it's a function, a function that I do for some time. So this is what it means. Do you want to live your life thinking as society will, will uh, direct us? that you are so-and-so, you should do things like this, you should live your life like this, you must get an education like this, you must fit into society like this, and you do all that, and you try to fit in a little Krishna conscious. Or will you be Krishna conscious and fit in all those other things that will only last for a few years? We don't even know how long it will last. Just like one devotee, in the U.S., one temple that I'm in charge of, he said, my, my wife just lost her job. She had this very good job. She just lost her job. So even if you do all this and study and, and you get some work, you can lose it at any time. And especially here in India, there's a lot of competition. 1. Point billion people, 1.5 billion people, you know, a lot of competition. So, so what is our real, this is, this is the beginning of Krishna consciousness. And this is the beginning of attachment or detachment. As far as detachment goes, Rupa Goswami, he says, Nirvanda Krishna Sambande. That how do you become detached from temporary things? Krishna is somebody. You become attached to Krishna. Krishna says in the beginning of the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Maya Sakta Mana Partha Yoga Munjam Mana Shaya. He says that uh, you, you should become very attached to me. This is the real essence of yoga. Otherwise, yoga is very difficult, as Lord Brahma says, Pantas Dukoti Shatavatsara Sampagam Yoga. Vayora tapi manasa mungi muni punga banga. That the yogis and the jnanis, they spend millions of years 
in breathing process, or as Srila Prabhupada says, uh, trying to move as fast as the mind, but still they can't obtain Krishna. Even if you can move, how fast is the mind? No. I just saw one article that popped up on my screen just a half an hour ago. It said some new galaxies, and it said there are about a hundred billion galaxies in the universe. Now how do they know that? No. <laughs> I mean, how do you know there's a hundred million galaxies? And how do you even know the limits? It's total speculation. But anyway, point is that you pick one of those galaxies, as they call it, and you, you can go there in one second. That galaxy, it takes the light, according to them, the light from such and such galaxy, 300, uh, it's uh, 300,000 light years away. You know? But you can go there with the mind in one second. So that's how, fa the mind is faster than the speed of light. You know? It goes beyond the, the restrictions of matter, according to Einstein. You, know? you can only go up to the speed of light. So, just like in science, now, they, some years back, they were experimenting with the God, God particle. Anyone heard of the God particle? Yes. Yeah, so. so they made a big accelerator to be able to study the God particle across like millions and millions and millions and millions of rupees, crores and crores and crores. And made this huge accelerator in Switzerland. And then they said, now we're going to study the God particle. And they started the accelerator. No. There it is. And then, oh no, it just went through France and off into England and we lost it. So, what are they even talking about? That's why I gave up nuclear physics. I said, how do we even know this is happening? No. We see some little lines in going through some liquid, and we say this is this and this is that, how do we know? We can't see it. No. Uh, so anyway, so we have to decide, uh, how will I live my life? We have to be attached to something, the living entity. We are tiny particles. Of spirit, of spirit, and therefore we depend on Krishna. Krishna says, "Everyone depends on me." Everyone follows my path, but what we have to decide: which path will I follow, Mahamaya or Yoga Maya? No. Mahamaya means illusory energy. This is a very popular one in the material world. Most people like the path of illusion, that I am this, I am that. Just like when I was being introduced, all these designations, which have nothing to do with me. So, <clears throat> so this is uh, Krishna consciousness, means Krishna Samvande. We become attached to Krishna. And this process is like, it's not some unique, mystical, difficult process. Although Bhagavad Gita says, Raja Vidya Raja Guyam. This, this Bhagavad Gita is Raja Guya. It, is, it enters into the deepest mysteries of existence. Just like I wrote a letter to Elon Musk, while oh, I'm waiting for his answer. Maybe it will never come. Because our ashram is about 30 miles away from. 50 kilometers from where he has his space launching station. <clears throat> so I wrote a letter, I said, you're trying to study outer space with so much effort. I said, I'm a monk and I can, I can show you how to study inner, study inner space, which is a much greater dimension. It's unlimited and it doesn't cost anything. You don't have to spend millions of dollars or a rocket ship that half the time goes into the ocean. And so, you, know, you can save more money. Uh, so 
I'm waiting for the answer. I mean, I did. I said it a little more eloquent, eloquently. But. So anyway, <clears throat> this is Krishna consciousness. It doesn't cost. Prabhupada said this so many times. So we. It's not some big mystical process that we're following. We've already done it. Every one of you has done this process of detachment. You've gone through it. You know? Because you, when you were a little baby, you pick something up, some keys or some object, and you, you put it in your mouth, uh, anamaya. And then if somebody tries to take away from you, scandal, big problem. You know? But if they give you something better, shinier, nicer, you give it up very easily. And then, after that, we get a toy or a doll or something, and we give up the, the new object. And then we get a bicycle or something else, and we give up the toy. And then we get something else, and we give that up. And we've been doing it all our life. So this detachment is not some mystical process. It's just replacing something, as Krishna says, param dushtvani vartate. It's getting a higher taste. Because Krishna consciousness means taste. Everything is based on rasa, taste. And <clears throat> by hearing Bhagavad Gita, by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, by hearing Chaitanya Charitamrita, then we all get a higher taste. And we can easily give up material, the material world. Giving up the material world doesn't mean that we leave everything behind, like our education or whatever, whatever we're studying, whatever we're doing. It doesn't mean that. It means that giving it up, just like Krishna says, Sarvadamam Parichaja, Mami Kam Sharanam Raja, the end of Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> he says, give up all your dharma. So people, when they read that, they think, how can I give everything up? I will become irresponsible. But Krishna, when he says, give it up in the sense, give up the idea that it belongs to you. Srila Prabhupada said one time, renunciation means to renounce, the, to renounce the idea that I have something. Because Krishna, sarva loka maheshwaram. Krishna is the owner of everything. We're just borrowing it, or we're getting it on leasing. You know? We're leasing this body for trying to enjoy this material world, or hopefully trying to become self-realized. Because that's the actual purpose of the body, to become Krishna conscious. So, uh, so we, we become detached by experiencing something more wonderful. And Krishna consciousness is the only thing that can offer something more wonderful all the time. Just like you can make money and maybe you can do more things, buy more things. Although every person I've ever met that has a lot of money is, has more anxiety than anyone else. Always worried, I will lose my money. Someone will take it away. Someone's coming up, they're going to replace me, they're going to take my business, they're going to copy it. No. In India, some of the places also where I, in my, uh, where I, I'm responsible, Mexico, you know, it's like, when anybody does something, immediately there's a hundred people that are copying it. No. You just have to do it quickly, make some money and do something else because somebody will copy it and do it cheaper. And so that's why they call it, in the U.S., they call that dog-eat-dog -dog world. So much competition. And so, <clears throat> but in Krishna consciousness, the only competition is with oneself. Because you're always trying to come to a higher plane of understanding. So we can take as an example, just like down in the, the museum, they have the exhibit of Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahi Anya. That here is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's not different 
from Radha and Krishna. So uh, Ramananda Roy, he was such a great uh, devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, yet he was a government officer. He was the highest. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed him something that he didn't show anyone else, that he was actually Radha and Krishna combined. He showed this only to Ramananda Roy. And he was a government officer, a kayashta. A kayashta is, means an, an intelligent shudra. You know? And so, uh, so what does it take? It doesn't mean when he gives up, when it says to give up your dharmas, it means give up the idea that he belongs to you. Give up the idea that your family even belongs to you. Just like we say, my family. But how is it mine? Everyone in the family can do what they want. Under some social uh, norms, people stay together. And usually, why is it that people stay together? Why do we have family? Why do we even do this? No. Because we're looking for Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that pratiparam pranamrita svadhanam. At every step, everyone is looking for Krishna. But when you don't have Krishna, what do you have? Family. That's the closest thing. The most intimate. You know, these are people that I've known since I was born. But what is the difference between my family and someone else's family? Just like when King uh, Chitraketu uh, lost his son, he tried so hard to have a son. He had many, many wives. No, I couldn't produce any children. Finally, by the blessing of Angira Muni, he got a son. Uh, and Angira told him, the name of this boy will be Harsha Shoka. He'll bring you happiness and he'll, actually any child will do that. But this was an extreme case. He was so happy. He wanted for years and years, he tried to have a child. And he finally, he was so happy. But then out of envy, very dangerous thing ended. The co-wives conspired against the one who had the child and poisoned him. And Chitraketu came and he said, uh, he tried to wake up his child, wake up, my dear child, wouldn't wake up. He was dead. And Chitraketu was crying and lamenting. And then Angira Muni came with Narada Muni. And Angira Muni said, I told you, Harsha Shoka. That is the nature of this world. That you get something and you enjoy it. Therefore, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Dukesh Vanutvigna Vana, Sukeshu Vigata Spriya, Vita Raga Vaya Krodha, Stita Dir Muni Uchate. He says, when one in the face of difficulty does not become disturbed, the mind doesn't become disturbed. And in the face of happiness, one doesn't become uh, elated or, you know, overjoyed. Then, then, jitta, raga, you can overcome attachment, <clears throat> fear, and anger. Three things that keep us locked into the material energy. So, so Narada Muni began to preach, but Chitraketu couldn't hear. So Narada Muni, by his mystical potency, he woke up the child. And, and Chitraketu said, my dear son, he looked, which father are you? I've had so many. No. Are you number one, two, three, ten, twenty, fifty, a hundred? No. Which one? And then the son says, just the soul is on, on a journey through life from one body to another, just like two leaves going in a river. Sometimes they're together and the current will separate them and they will go their individual way. So the boy was preaching to him. Actually, it wasn't really the boy. It was Narada Muni who projected himself into the body of the boy and was speaking to Chitraketu. And Chitraketu understood. So all of us, everyone here has a mother, right? I think most likely. Either you have or you had or you, you know. So 
and mother is dear. In India, in most places I see, they put a picture of the mother with a little halo, you know, some effulgence. You know, very dear, my mother. In most cases, sometimes. Nowadays, modern society, mothers are not like they used to be. Although in India, it's a little better. In the U.S., people could care less about their mother. And so, <clears throat> so we all love our mother. But then, what, what, what happened to the last mother that you loved so much? Where is she? You don't even know who she is. You might bump into her and not even like her because maybe she scolded you. So when you see her, no, I don't like that person. And that was your dear mother. No. So this is called philosophy. This is the science of Bhagavad Gita. When we see things from the perspective of the soul, and we see that that person, the most intimate person who I am eternally related to is Krishna. No. Just like uh, we go down to the temple downstairs, we see Krishna so beautifully dressed. Who can dress like that? No. His, one of his names is Subhasa. He's the, the best dresser. And just like, you know, someone, Srila Prabhupada said, you eat to please yourself and dress to please others. So, uh, so let's say, you know, people go to a store and they're thinking of this type of shirt or blouse or pants or dress or, you know, how will I look better? Or you know, we, we are, fix our hair. I don't have to worry about that too much. You know? you know, we fix our hair this way, that way. How will, I, how will I become attractive to others? But Krishna is the most attractive. That's what his name means. So the point is we should look for Krishna. Because Krishna says, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, Anandam Buddhivardhanam. He is the only person who can always make us happier and happier and happier. You can't do that by a material process. Actually, just the opposite. Anything you have. Just like I remember when I ate my first samosa in life. You know, when I first met the devotees, because in the U.S. there wasn't any samosas. You know other thing. So I was on a, I was in, into macrobiotics, and, you know, only eating fruit and nuts and, you know, totally, everything totally organic. I grew it myself. So they said, I said, cook food. Oh, no, no, no. no. Trying to be an artificial yogi. So, uh, but then they said, just try it. Try one of your, and I ate about 30 samosas. You know. <laughs> Got very sick. But then when I took another samosa, it was good, but it wasn't the same. So that's, I mean, and everything in the material world is called the, the land of diminishing returns. And the spiritual world is the land of increasing returns. If you do your spiritual life properly, if you chant the holy name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. As we are supposed to. How are we supposed to chant? No. Well, it's called Sankirtan. Sankirtan has different meanings. One meaning of Sankirtan is we chant together with other people. And then we feel the strength, we get the strength of the kirtan from others. Therefore, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur said that kirtan is m more powerful than japa. But japa is more intimate than kirtan. So both of them go hand in hand. And if you can do good japa, you can do good kirtan. And if you can do good kirtan, you can do good japa. And another meaning of sankirtan is that I will unite all of the elements of Sankirtan together in one <clears throat> effort. Meaning, as Prabhupada said, I will engage the tongue, I will engage the touch, I will engage the mind, I, everything, I will engage the sight, I can look at the deity, or I can look at the holy name, 
just like when I used to get really distracted. Not that it doesn't happen even now, but you know, in the beginning I would get distracted all the time. So I would just put the holy name right there and just, you know, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and read it for like three or four rounds until my mind became concentrated. And then, then I could chant. Or I would take, envision the holy name in my mind and see the word. And this is all, we just try to concentrate like this when we chant the holy name. Just keep fixed on the holy name. One time a devotee asked Srila Prabhupada that what, 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 the, I, my mind becomes so distracted uh, when I chant the holy name. What, what can I do about the mind? Prabhupada said, when you are chanting, there is no question of mind. You're not supposed to think of anything. You're supposed to chant the holy name. Then the mind will become obedient and subservient to the holy name. And then the mind will function properly and remember Krishna. And then Krishna will appear in the mind when you're chanting the holy name. And the best way to chant the holy name, if you want to chant, of course, you've all heard this, you can do it early in the morning. But how do you become inspired to chant early in the morning? First of all, you take rest early. You know. but, but most important, the last thing you do in your day is hear about Krishna. When I joined in the beginning of my Krishna consciousness, every day in every temple at 8.15 at night, everybody would sit together and we would read the Krishna book for 45 minutes. Everybody had to do this. Have a little milk, listen to the Krishna book 45 minutes, take rest at 9, get up at 3, and you're thinking about Krishna. So if you make this your sankalpa, that every night I will hear about Krishna, no Facebook, no computer, no internet, none of that. Hearing about Krishna, then in the morning you will wake up and chant the holy name. But if you're on Facebook or something else, then you first thing in the morning, what happened to so and so? No. I wonder what happened. Let me go back on Facebook and find out. No. When I took rest, uh, this was this this circumstance was there. Let me see. Totally distracted from Krishna. So this distraction is very, very common. And the only solution is to become attracted to Krishna, to make Krishna. As he says in Bhagavad Gita, Ma Manushmara Yudya Cha. First you remember Krishna. No. Not that Krishna is, is after everything else. Not that Krishna is dessert. No. But Krishna is the main course. No. And everything else is just secondary. Just like all of us, we all have to go to the bathroom. Right? Anybody, maybe somebody here doesn't, but most people do. Now, that, but that's not the goal of our life. No. We're not thinking, I can hardly wait. No. You know, I can just hardly wait to do this. Of course, if you have an urgency, you may think like that. But the point is, it's a very insignificant thing. We don't meditate on it. We don't think about it. It's automatic. It comes, you, you finish, and you go. Although I remember my father, he was wealthy. He had a big bathroom, a big, huge bathroom. It was about as big as most people's living room. You know, nice ornaments. He had television and magazine rack and books. You know, <clears throat> you know I guess he, he looked forward to it. But most people, it's... So the point is, when we really become Krishna conscious, when we become attached to the chanting the holy name of Krishna, then everything we do in life is just like that. It's secondary. And it, you can do it very efficiently and very quickly because Krishna consciousness, Krishna says, Matashmitir jnanam apohanam cha. From me comes all knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. So if we're chanting the holy name, we're hearing about Krishna, hearing Bhagavad Gita, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, hearing Chaitanya Charitamrita. If we're doing this, then Krishna will give us knowledge, you know, 
Because where does knowledge come from? Krishna says, I will give you knowledge. He promises that. Tesham satati uttanam bhajatam piti purvakam dhami buddhi yogam tam yenam amupayanti te. He said, if you always, no, satati uttanam, you're always working with me, you're always thinking about me. Bhajatam piti purvakam with love, with love and devotion. Not just thinking about me because uh, you want to get something from me, but think meditating on me because I'm so wonderful, then I will give you the intelligence. But what kind of intelligence? Yenama upayantite. The intelligence to come back to me, which is the only thing that there is, the only goal in life. There's only one goal, which is go back home, back to God. And every other goal is just subsidiary function to maintain this body. That's all it is. You'll, you'll study, most of you, for 25 years, you know, if you go through the whole you know, system, you know, first, second, primary, secondary, this, that level, university, postgraduate, you'll study between 18 to 25 years just to maintain his body. So if we have to do that, for me, how much more effort should we make to be Krishna conscious? And it doesn't take that long. That's the nice thing about it. It takes you so long to get a degree. And then, just like a, one, one country in my area of responsibility, Colombia, I met so many taxi drivers, they had a university degree. Couldn't get a job. So they ended up driving a taxi. And so, uh, there's no guarantee. But with Krishna consciousness, Krishna says that I guarantee that my devotee will never perish. So one may say, well, wait a minute, what happened to me? I studied Bhagavad Gita, I've been chanting for five years, and I still have problems. Just like one girl wrote to Srila Prabhupada, and she said, Prabhupada, I don't, I don't think Krishna consciousness is working. I've been chanting for six months and I still get sick. So we had some misconception about Krishna consciousness. So the point is that Krishna consciousness is so wonderful that it will take us to the highest realms of existence. And we just have to be a little serious. And sometimes Krishna, you know, he makes it a little bit of a challenge. Um, and we just have to accept that challenge. Because you have so many challenges. In school, you have to graduate, you have to do a thesis. And uh, for a job, you have to do an interview and this or that. To start a business, you have to make such an effort. So there's so many challenges. And the only challenge is Krishna consciousness is to just keep moving forward. Because it's the only thing that, that makes us move forward. Otherwise, just like this body, everything will, and just like Prabhupada said, there is the Shad uh, Vikar, uh, the six changes that birth, uh, growth, uh, existence, uh, you know, birth, youth, growth, existence, dwindling, and death. So you get to a certain point and it goes downhill. And everything in this world is like that. But with Krishna consciousness, it's always, up, it's always uh, achieving something greater. So this is what we should be trying to do. This is uh, what Krishna is giving us and this is what Srila Prabhupada has given us. It just requires faith in Krishna. So I'll just, I'll just close with one little story. There was a Brahmin. And this Brahmin had a very wonderful wife. She was very dedicated. And he was very dedicated. He was so, you know, attentive to his spiritual activities. One day Lord Vishnu appeared in his mind and said, my dear Brahmin, you are so you're, you're so dedicated to my service. I will give you three wishes. 
whatever you want. Do you have a wish now? He thought. You know, I was thinking, I'm a Brahmin, I don't need much. But, my Lord, there is one thing. My wife, she's wonderful. But she sometimes she talks too much and it's a little distracting. So maybe you can do something about that. He said, it is done. She's dead. <laughs> the Brahmin, no, and the Lord disappeared. What am I going to do? I didn't, I didn't want that. I just wanted it to be a little... And then all the people started coming. Oh, we're lamenting for your wife. She was so wonderful. What are you going to do? And he's thinking, what am I going to do? I have three wishes. He said, my Lord, my second wish is that my wife will come back to life. There she was, back, talking again. No. I'll tolerate, I'll tolerate anything. So some time went by, one year, two years, three years. So then the Lord appeared and said, my dear Brahmin, you never asked for your third wish. He said, no, my Lord, I didn't. Because I learned that whatever I may desire in this world will always be incomplete without your mercy. And therefore my third wish is whatever you desire, that is what I desire. So. So, this is what we should desire. We desire that. What does Krishna want? People ask me this, how do I know what Krishna wants? And I say, I can't believe you're asking that. Krishna tells you 700 things in Bhagavad Gita, what he wants. And then Bhagavatam, another 18,000 blessings, uh, instructions. And then if that's not enough, another few thousand in Chaitanya Charitamrita. No. And if that's not enough, nectar of devotion, Rupa Goswami instructs us. And if that's not enough, so we have so much you know, to tell us what Krishna wants. But basically what Krishna wants, what we just said a few minutes ago, Sarvadamam Paricha Jahamame Kamsha, you surrender to me. You make everything, make all of your dharmas part of your Krishna consciousness. It all becomes united. It all becomes mine. And when you make it mine, I, I will perfect it. I will make it spiritual. You know, everything you need to do in life, just offer it to me. Chapter how do we know? How, that's a challenge. How do we know how to offer it to Krishna? That, that's why we have Guru. You know, uh, Shiksha Guru, Diksha Guru. You know, uh, that's why we have books. That's why we have uh, Sadhu Sangha, so that we can understand. Shri Gurun Vaishnava as we pray in Mangala Charan, that uh, all the different gurus, all the Vaishnavas, they will tell me what to do. They will help me understand how to, uh, how to live my life in a Krishna consciousness. So this is this is sim our, our this is how we become detached by becoming attached. So actually, Krishna consciousness is always positive. You're just trying to develop a better taste for the holy name, a more taste for hearing and chanting about Krishna, more taste for sadam. That's not a difficult one. Most people have no difficulty with that taste. That's why Krishna actually becomes prasada, because everyone likes to eat. It is the one act of con uh, uh, cons consummation that we all do more than any other. We consume, you know, we consume food more than any other thing in life. And therefore, we offer it to Krishna and it becomes, we could become purified. And we just have to learn to do, do that with every thought, every action, and every word. If we can just dedicate every, even though we're living in this world and it may appear that we're, we're living, we're an ordinary person like so many other people, because I'm dedicating everything to Krishna, I'm Jivanukta, I'm liberated. 
<coughs> that's the secret. You know, Srila Prabhupada says, I'll, I'll conclude my conclusion with this. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, speaking about the Kurma Brahman, he said, you can live comfortably in your own home. No need to take sinyat. But living comfortably means uh, comfortably in Krishna consciousness. No, not comfortably in maya. Because maya is never comfortable. It's never comfortable. You always want more. If you're, how do you know if you're in maya? Well, of course, in Krishna consciousness we want more. But we, we feel totally satisfied. And it's so wonderful that we want more. But in material life, you always want more. You're never satisfied. I've met some very, very wealthy people. Uh, but they're never satisfied. They always want more. More power, more money, more people. You know, more recognition. All that. And therefore Lord Chaitanya says, Nadana na janana sundari kapitava. Don't desire these things. So anyway, these are some thoughts on how to become detached, which actually we're already detached from everything in this world because we have nothing to do with it. But how to realize that? That is chanting the holy name, associating, associating with devotees, hearing Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, purifying your home by having deities and worshiping the deity. Then you'll become detached, guaranteed. Lord Chaitanya guarantees it. Hare Krishna. Thank you all very much for your attention. Are there any question, comment, anything? So, Maharaj has given us an opportunity to take few questions. So, I've already got few questions in hand from some devotees there. So, I can take them up first, and then meanwhile you can be prepared with your questions and raise your hands. Thank you. Okay. Here it comes. And the winner is, no. <laughs> what are the different symptoms of the person who has pride and envy? No. Uh, usually they're very nasty. No. Uh, not very likable. A proud person, it's like I remember one devotee who was unfortunately touched by pride. He had a lot of money. And, you know, before he was a simple brahmachari, he got married, had a lot of money. He came to the temple once, and he like, walked like this. Didn't look at anybody. Went in over to the basin to the deity, walked out, got in his big car, took off. That's pride. And envy, we can see envy, someone will always be trying to put us down, trying to show how they're better. That's how you can see it. So when you see it in your own heart, then you have to get rid of it. If you're trying to think negatively about someone else, this is envy. And it's pride. The two are very related to one another. If you have envy, it's because you're proud. And if you're proud, it's because you have envy. They go hand in hand. What will happen to the person who is ungrateful to his authorities in spiritual life? probably won't make very much advancement. No. May you please help to know about this. So, yes, uh, if we're on, everything in Krishna consciousness has to do with being grateful to Krishna and grateful to Sri Guru and the Vaishnava. And that, how do we show that, uh, that gratefulness? By trying to uh, please them. And that also makes us free from envy. I, somebody asked me, how do I get rid of envy? I said, go to the person you like the least and serve them. No. Then you'll get rid of envy. The person who you can't, you, the last person on the wor in the world you would want to associate with, go and serve them. And then your envy will go away very quickly. You run the Vlasar Maharaj in search of the wonderful thank you. Okay. Uh, as our as our movement is sankirtan movement, sometimes 
it has uh, it's seen that devotees become puffed up and show in a show-off mood while doing kirtan on the mic. You got careful, careful. How can I? How can he save himself from getting puffed up and dovetail himself in sankirtan with the proper mood? Well, that's why Lord Chaitanya gave us this shastika. Actually, I always tell people when they take Bhakti Shastri, Bhakti Vai Baba, everything, that this is the theory. Now you have to apply it. The best way, just like if you're getting Bhakti Shastri, I told the, our director of education, if, they, if a person lives outside and has not lived in the ashram, let them come 10 weekends and wash pots scrub the floor before they get their certificate. Then you'll understand what it means. Just like one devotee, most of you have heard of Aindra probably, right? So, uh, Aindra Prabhu, one devotee wanted to join the Kirtan party. So, uh, that was Madhava. You heard of Madhava? You know, with the long hair, strange haircut. So, he told me that I, w I came and I wanted to join the kirtan party. And he said, okay, meet me tomorrow at five in the morning here in the ashram. So we saw him, he had a bucket and gloves. He said, now we will scrub the bathroom every morning at this time, 30 days in a row. He said, then you can enter the kirtan. So, humility, this is how, how do we become humble and get free from his pride being puffed up. Understand that kirtan, if we're doing kirtan, is an offering to Krishna. It's not a chance to show how many beats per minute I can do on the mridanga, you know, or something like that. You know. After you listen to Prabhupada playing the mridanga, he never, he plays very beautifully. As the Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, madura mridanga bhaji, should be very sweet, not and Prabhupada never did this super fast. He did, he would play fast, but not super fast. And uh, you can learn everything from Prabhupada. Just like I've seen many devotees in, in India, especially in, in northern India, well, everywhere actually, uh, when they start chanting the Maha Mantra a little more quickly, even sometimes slowly, they say Hari Ram. But it's not Ram, it's Rama. This is the Hindi uh, corruption, saying Ram, Arjun, you know, actually Sanskrit, and Mahamantra is a Sanskrit mantra. It's not a, it's not a Hindi mantra. You know. So, Dhanachandra, uh, Dhanachandra Goswami said, this is a 32-syllable mantra. If you listen to Srila Prabhupada, when he chants, you'll never hear him saying Ram. Is Ram, very short A, Ram, you know. and so if we just listen to Prabhupada and observe Prabhupada and hear Prabhupada, then we can understand how to do kirtan, how to do everything. We can understand. This is Krishna consciousness. Oh, here's another one. Here. Even, even we heard and read in Srila Prabhupada's books that we are not the bodies, but the soul. But it is difficult to act on the level of the soul. Would you like to share some tips to come onto the level of the soul and act accordingly? Yes, I can tell you a little story. I, I was talking to a professor in the U.S., very, you know, accomplished professor. And so he said, why does Prabhupada say so many times you're not this body? And so I saw he had some cigarettes in his pocket. I said, take out that package. I was thinking, Swami wants a cigarette? No, no, and so, uh, so I said, what does it say on the side? Cigarette smoking may be hazardous to your health. I said, how many times have you seen that? And how many, I said, how many years have you been, oh, I've been smoking 20 years. How many times have you seen this? And you're still smoking. I said, that's why Prabhupada says, you are not this body. He said, okay, now I understand. So, 
the more we listen and the more we understand that every difficulty in life that we have is, is being staged by Krishna through his energies so that we will realize I'm not this body. The whole material world is designed to show it. earthquakes, you know, uh, you know, cyclones, uh, uh, tornadoes, and plagues, war, you know, so many things. Difficulties. All these difficulties are educational. They are opportunities for us to realize that I'm not this body. So we just have to take advantage of something that Krishna is giving us at every moment, a different type of uh, experience. Here's a few more questions. Okay. At the beginning, it was very happy to see myself as devotee, but nowadays, more I, I read Shastras, I find myself cheater, and I find, I feel low. How to overcome this thought? Well, in one sense, we should feel that way. You know? Because we're understanding, you know, this world makes us think, I'm the most important. I'm the main, you know, I'm this, I'm that. So, we should understand, not the word, of course everyone's a cheater. Until you're a pure devotee, you have to cheat a little bit. You, know? you want to make profit. Srila Prabhupada said for anyone doing business that if you make more than 25%, you will meet Yamara. Make more than 25% profit, then you will meet Yamara. Meaning there's a reaction. So Prabhupada indicated 25% is considered, you know, if you make like 2,000%, you're exploiting someone. So that's what Prabhupada meant. Don't exploit. Make a little bit of profit so you can live honestly. But why exploit? Exploitation means I make so much and everybody works for me. And so, even if I do that, then I use everything for Krishna, even to help those people that work for me. Then it's okay. You can make as much as you want. So, uh, yes, we should realize that, but that should make us blissful. Yes, I've been cheating myself all these years say, thinking I was this body. But one thing that makes us a little, sometimes a little sad in Krishna consciousness is that in the beginning we see the devotees as very divine beings dis descended from celestial world. But then we see, oh, they have problems like me. They have challenges like me. And then we start to think less of the devotee. So we should avoid that. Everyone, Prabhupada said, everyone in the material world is like a patient in the hospital. We're all being healed. So we should never think badly about someone just because they, you know, are not, um, you know, they haven't become fully Krishna conscious. But in the hospital, someone is in the ICU and someone is there with a fever. So the person with a little fever, they're much better off. So someone will be better off, someone will be worse off. But all of us are here and we should try to see Rupa Goswami in Nectar of Instruction. He tells us this. We should try to see, at least see every devotee uh, and, and, and uh, respect them within your mind, every devotee. Skanda Purana says, whenever you see a devotee, you should offer respects, you should never be angry, and you should be happy to see them. Otherwise, you'll have a hellish mentality. So, uh, these are all instructions. So, if we see that I'm doing something wrong, then let me hear more and chant more so that I can do it right. And keep advancing. Krishna doesn't want to disappoint us. Krishna wants to bring us to his lotus feet. We want to be comfortable in the material world, so quite often we forget the ultimate goal of life. How to keep remembering ultimate goal of life? Live in a shack. No, no. Uh, just always remember that everything belongs to Krishna. And just like Srila Prabhupada, in, in the verse that I quoted from Bhagavad Gita 256, very beautiful purport, Srila Prabhupada says, 
A devotee will always be happy if they do two things. First, whenever there is difficulty, we think, oh, Krishna just gave me a little bit of difficulty. I should, I deserve so much more. He just gave me a, just enough to remember that I don't belong to this material world. And if we get good fortune, you know, money, whatever, we think, I don't deserve this, but Krishna is giving me this to be, to be engaged in his service. So just these two things will help us. You know, there's no, not a problem of being comfortable. Everyone requires a little bit of comfort to be psychologically balanced. Even Prabhupada, he, he couldn't stand it if a door would slam. He would become very upset. Like sometimes there's wind and, poof, and Prabhupada, who did that? And Prabhupada required sometimes one god brother of mine, he in, in Bhaktivedanta Manor in, in UK, he was chanting outside of Prabhupada's window and he thought, Prabhupada will hear me chanting so nicely. Maybe he'll come out and compliment me. And then he saw Prabhupada appear at the window. Yeah. He said, oh, there's so many places you can chant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pointing to the trees. What will happen to a devotee who has... Uh, what, uh, oh, pride in his devotion. Uh, he will have some difficulty. And, but Krishna will help that devotee realize that uh, pride is not uh, the object of life. Pride will, you know. That's why when we get some difficulty in spiritual life, we shouldn't be disturbed. We should think, Krishna is teaching me something. Just like most of you are studying. When you did get some difficult thing in your studies, you don't think, oh, let me give it up. You know, right? You have to study more. The same thing with Krishna consciousness. You're already doing it. You just have to apply it to Krishna. Somehow or another, we're willing to sacrifice our time and energy. People, I see people when I, sometimes I go out and walk at four in the morning, I see people going to work. So they're doing what we're doing, but they're not doing it for Krishna. So we're doing it for Krishna, that's all. How do we increase our compassion towards others? Compassion, uh, Kapila Dev says, Titikshasva Karunika. First comes tolerance. You have to learn to tolerate. If you can tolerate uh, different people doing things in a different way, <coughs> sometimes I don't like it. Somebody may have another religion. I don't like their concepts. No. Respect. Manadena. This is Lord Chaitanya's instruction. And from that respect comes tolerance. And when you are tolerant, then you can be compassionate. And Lord Chaitanya had three, three things. First, Vaishnava Seva. You serve the Vaishnavas. Then, Name Ruchi. Then you get a taste for the Holy Name. And when you get a taste for the Holy Name, Jive Doya. Then you can give compassion to others. What do we give more priority to? Our Sadhana or Seva? Both. Seva is, uh, sadhana is seva. Sadhana means the way that I can do more seva because I'm disciplined. If there's no sadhana, then your seva will be uh, probably incomplete. So sadhana, seva, they go together. And one complements the other. When, when, when we tell someone about many, many births and deaths and ask them to do bhakti, people don't agree with that. They say, I don't remember anything about my previous life. So how do I know that? So how to counteract this point? Yes, this is good. Srila Prabhupada taught us this. What you do is you say, uh, just like I had a body that was half a meter long, now I have a body that's two meters long. But my mother will never say, oh, that's a different person. It's the same person. So the body is always going through transition. But you always want to perpetuate your existence. You always want to, uh, you know, feel like uh, you have this feeling. Because the nature of the soul is such ananda. The nature of our soul is eternal. 
And therefore, we're always trying to create this, you know, keep the body going, take some herbs, uh, take some medicine, do some exercise, because we want to live, the nature of the soul is to go on, because the soul is eternal. So explain to them like that. Just like uh, if I, uh, if I, if I uh, have 20 years old and my body's like this, then when I'm 40 years old, I steal something. And then I give the argument, no, look, I have a different body. You know? But the mother will say, no, he's the same person. The government will say, no, it's the same person. You know? So the body is always changing at the time we have that exhibit here. Uh, and if people can't understand that, then that means they're, they're very determined to try to enjoy maya. And what can you do? Uh, and I don't know if they, in India they say that, but in, in the U.S. probably comes from the old Western days. They say you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. No. So you can give. Prabhupada said our duty is to give Krishna consciousness to others. We give it, we offer it, but our duty, but the result depends on Krishna, and that is part of the process of detachment for one who is actually preaching Krishna consciousness. You become detached because sometimes Krishna will put you in touch with someone, it looks like they're understanding, and they say, I don't believe that. You just spent 20 minutes explaining something to them, and they say, I don't believe it. And you feel devastated. I'm so intelligent, I explained everything you know, I know. Krishna is helping you to become detached, that you are not the doer. Uh, <clears throat> uh, that Ahankara vidu that ma man what is it? Ahankara vidu that ma kartahamiti manyate. When you think you're the doer, that is just a hunger. Just a hunger. So don't become bewildered by hunger. It takes a long time to understand my pride and behavior has hurt someone even after chanting. Please suggest how to overcome. Chant more and chant sincerely. No. When you see someone going through that, that's the lesson. So you, you have to, we have to be sensitive and see what's happening in our life and, and assimilate it, digest it, understand it, and overcome the ignorance that comes automatically with this body. What do you feel are comfortable then? I think we'll have to stop at some time. We'll take one more. One more. Pick it out here with no, without looking. Here it comes. Wow, this is two questions. <laughs> Please share some short point how to develop attachment to Krishna. Go take darshan of the deities. They're so beautiful. Chant before the deity, sit before the deity and chant the holy name and you'll feel so much attachment for Krishna. But you hear about Krishna. Just like if you read a book by some, some novel by someone you know, or someone goes and sees Star Wars or some, you know, something like that. They become attached. I've seen it. They wait, can't wait till the next, the next installation comes out. Just by hearing, you no, know, just by seeing something wonderful, some, some, someone that can share, you know, fight with a little light sword, whatever they call it. You know. If we can become so attached to that, how much more can we be, become attached to someone who can defeat, you know, uh, Banasura or Agasura, as a, or kill Putana at three months old? You know. Uh, kick the Shakatasura demon and defeat at three months old. Krishna says, Ajopisan Abhyatma Bhutanam Ishwaropisan. It appears that I am born, although even when I'm a little baby, I can defeat demons. No. So, you, you may think you've accomplished something. No. And if you, that's why Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his song, Gopi Jana Balava Giri Varadhari. Do you want to be Gopi Janabala? You want to imitate Krishna with the gopis? Okay, lift Govardhan Hill. 
then you can do it. No. He gives us that challenge. No. Even don't lift go lift a car with your little finger. No. Don't even try to lift over that. If you can do that, then we'll, we'll listen to you. So, and the second question, how to maintain Krishna consciousness while doing a job? Uh, follow Ramananda Roy, follow Arjuna. No. They had a job. No. And they did it for Krishna. We just have to understand, if we're working, then we offer the results to Krishna. The, the result will be money. So with that money, I make my life Krishna conscious, I make my home Krishna conscious, I make my family Krishna conscious. That's how to do it. Understand, everything is for Krishna. This money is for Krishna. This work I'm doing, while I'm working, I'm thinking this is all for Krishna. And, and, and the more you do that, the easier it will be to accomplish your work very, very perfectly. And with a minimal amount of effort, Krishna will give you that intelligence and ability. Krishna says, I am the ability in man and woman and every, and every living entity. Just like, how does a fly, how does a, a mosquito avoid you? How does a fly uh, move around like that so quickly? Uh, it comes from Krishna. So if Krishna can, can empower some little tiny living entity to do, and can empower a microbe to go in your body and disturb it completely and make you sick, if he can do that, how much more can he empower you when you're chanting his holy name? It's just a question of having that faith and determination. So thank you all very much for your kind attention. Now is uh, prasadam time. So now you can, you know, make get a nice taste of Krishna consciousness. Thank you all very much. Shri Prabhupada ki jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Mindi ki jai Tai Gaur Vivanandi So we'd like to thank you Maharaji for giving your precious time. You being so busy still you have managed time for our youth at this Noida. So we would like to you know, thank you so much for your words of wisdom. And we'd like to thank Maharaj by loudly chanting one time Hare Krishna Maha Mantra Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Sir, I will request uh, Buddhi Mandar Prabhu and Kalki to please come on the stage and uh, offer our gratitude to Maharaj. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hi. 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 Some code for bookmarks. <laughs> what is the difficulty? <laughs> Some personal notepad you can oh, okay. use. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We would humbly request Maharaj to please uh, give us this opportunity again and again whenever time permits. I will do so. Thank you, Maharaj. So, for all the devotees, Sanskar Bhavan mein aap sabhi ke liye prashad available hai. To rukhenge, pehle Maharaj ji nikal ne ke baad. So please, all of you can leave for prashadam. Uh, it will be uh, prashadam will be available in Sanskar Bhavan. Aap sabhi Sanskar Bhavan ke liye nikal sakte hain. Thank you. Hari Krishna.